Welcome all. I'm joined today by Brian Arduni, the Executive Director of the Armenian Assembly of America. So, Mr. Arduni, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. To start off, I'm, it's interesting that we are doing this interview at a moment where many are talking about greater U.S. engagement in Armenia, greater U.S. engagement in the talks between Armenia and Azerbaijan. The State Department and Congress have both made it clear that Azerbaijan was the aggressor in last month's major attack on eastern and southern Armenia. The U.S. also was uh, fundamental in negotiating the release of 17 Armenian POWs, um, which happened at the end of September. The U.S. has also released multiple statements from the State Department calling on Azerbaijani forces to pull back out of Armenian territory. Uh, how does the Armenian Assembly of America assess this talk, this narrative, that there is greater U.S. engagement now in the region and primarily in Armenia? Those are great questions. And I'm here not just by myself, but also with our co-chairs, Van Kerkorian and Anthony Barsamian, along with our Congressional Relations Director, and of course, uh, our Regional Director, Arpi Vartanian, who's here on the ground. And this trip, this visit, is significant for many reasons, as you're talking about. The uh, level of U.S. engagement, something that we continue to advocate for, encourage. So you are here in Armenia with uh, many of your co-chair colleagues. Can you tell us a little more about your visit? What was the purpose of the visit? Uh, we, we are here for several reasons. First and foremost, given the ongoing attacks and what happened in September, we are here to express our solidarity with the Armenian people, both here in Armenia and in Atsakh. Um, and we are also here to assess um, what more we can do to help strengthen and advance U.S.-Armenian relations. So we're here meeting with different uh, U.S. officials, Armenian officials, civil society, and we will be able to go back to the United States and have a better, uh, firmer understanding of, of what we can do as an organization uh, to help. And, you know, recently we saw that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi paid a historic visit to the country. She did not visit Azerbaijan, she did not visit Georgia, and she visited right after the mid-September attack by Azerbaijan. Some people are saying that there isn't an understanding of how significant Pelosi's visit to Armenia was. So how do yourself and the assembly assess Pelosi's visit to Armenia? The visit was, was very historic, and I, and I agree that the significance of her visit may be um, not understood or well understood as best it could be, but it, it's very significant, very important. You saw that her words echoed what President Biden has said in terms of helping defend democracy against autocracy. And that's exactly the situation that's happening here uh, in Armenia, the attacks, the ongoing attacks by Azerbaijan against Armenia into Armenian territory. And the speaker made it very clear. She's the third ranking official in the United States. She made it very clear upon her visit that it was Azerbaijan that was responsible for these illegal attacks and that she was here to discuss Armenia's security and Armenia's democracy, Armenia's economy, and ways that the U.S. can further engage. And that's what we do at the Armenian Assembly. We're looking for those ways to help strengthen the relationship and increase and expand U.S. assistance. And at this particular moment in time, um, it's, it's critically important, and we're very much focused on the security assistance for Armenia. You know, we see phrases sometimes when we speak to our friends and colleagues in the United States, things like Enforce 907, Resolution 1400. Uh, but obviously, for many of those who aren't familiar with American politics or the situation on the Hill, these things don't really make much sense. So when we see things like this, like Enforce 907, I mean, what are we really what talking are, about? What here? are we talking about? So, so Section 907 of the Freedom Support Act was enacted uh, many, many years ago, actually, right, in 1992. 
uh, when Azerbaijan at that time launched uh, you know, an unprovoked war against the Armenian people in Atsakh. And um, what, it, what it said was that no U.S. assistance, and I'm paraphrasing, but no U.S. assistance should go to Azerbaijan while they're taking offensive uh, measures against the Armenian people, why, the, why they continue their hostilities. And so from our perspective, and I think it, the facts speak very clearly to this, in, in September 13th, certainly does, Azerbaijan continues its aggressive actions against the Armenian people, and therefore we want to make sure that the fundamental principles of Section 907 are enforced, are upheld, which would mean no assistance going to Azerbaijan until they cease and desist uh, with this uh, uh, aggressive and hostile actions towards the Armenian people. Mm. And what do you think is the Azerbaijani reaction to the recent developments, partly in Azerbaijan, but also there are many Azerbaijani groups and Turkish groups that are operating also in Washington, D.C. How do you think they perceived Pelosi's visit and also this talk about greater U.S. engagement? Well, in addition to Pelosi's visit, when the recently appointed um, negotiator, uh, Phil Reeker, uh, for the OSE, for the U.S. co-chair, was appointed and actually visiting Azerbaijan for talks is when Azerbaijan launched that attack in September. And then you have um, comments by, at least in the Azeri media, where they're more or less dismissive of the, the visit by the speaker. Why are they dismissive? Because the value structure is different, right? We're, we're looking at core values between the United States and Armenia, democracy, rule of law, human rights, and, and the shared values between our two countries. Azerbaijan doesn't share any of those values. So, you know, you see the difference in the, in the reaction. Mm -hmm. And do you think that congressmen and senators on the Hill recognize now that there is this discrepancy, that Armenia is a democracy, much like the US, whilst Azerbaijan is an autocracy? Uh, many people, felt before that Armenia, there wasn't an understanding that Armenia was a small democracy surrounded by uh, dictatorships. Do you think that people on the Hill are starting to understand that? Yes, and that's something that we talk about every, every day, every time we're up on the Hill, um, meeting with members and staff, talking about the geographic situation uh, of Armenia and Atsakh, the importance of helping you know, a young democracy, and again, this is something from the president to the speaker that they've been very clear and consistent on in terms of helping support uh, democracy. And so it's, it's up to us in the United States, Armenian Americans, to continue to reach out to the members of Congress to advocate for strong U.S. support for Armenia. And, and finally, I just want to mention Nina Hachigian, who served as, uh, as the city of Los Angeles' deputy mayor for international affairs. She was recently, recently appointed to the U.S. Department of State as the Special Representative for Subnational Diplomacy. Uh, this is good news, right, I assume, yes. to have an Armenian-American now serving in such a high position within the State Department. What was your reaction to that news? We welcomed this latest development. Nina is someone that we've had the opportunity to work with uh, over the years. We recently honored her at an Armenian Assembly event, our 50th anniversary event in California. So it, it's just um, a great uh, opportunity to see her continue to advance, um, very professional. She is more than well qualified uh, for the position and we know that she will um, you know, distinguish herself in this, this role as well. Well, Brian Arduni, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet. Thank you.